Welcome to Distry, welcome to the stage, Peter O'Neill. Thank you. Hello, Ryan. So, Ryan, thank you very much, and also thank you very much to, to Distry for the invitation to come here and to present. Um, I've been here for a few days already. I mean, who could turn down the opportunity to work out of a room in Monte Carlo instead of working out of a home office in a still very cold southern Germany, which is where I live. So I've been down here for a few days and had a chance to meet some of you already. And I must say that I'm very impressed at, at your focus and your attention to developing relationships and partnerships and finding partnerships during this event with, of course, with this location, so many other distractions out there that you could be uh, looking at as well. So um, very impressed at your focus. I'm one of, uh, I think, 370 analysts at Forrester Research. And uh, we don't organize ourselves in research by a market or a technology. We're organized by roles. We service specific roles in the IT organization, in the marketing organization, across various industries, and also certain roles within the technology industry itself. And what we try to do with our advice and our research and our publications is make individuals in those roles successful for themselves individually, personally, but also, of course, as part of their companies. The role that I service with my research, with my advice, is a strategy professional in the technology industry itself. The vendors or resellers, and actually more and more, it's not the seed, even distributors are becoming clients of Forrester and taking advantage of some of the research information that we put together. Now, of course, every analyst loves to have a title like coming upheaval because it really makes uh, the excitement. It sells papers, it sells reports, it sells advisories. But actually, I'm convinced that there are some changes going on around us at the moment that are going to have fundamental implications on the way that we do business in our industry, whether we're vendors or resellers or distributors or service providers providing information technology. So let me take you through some of those points and give him some information in that direction. And this is the whole agenda. So I'll talk about those diverse forces. One of them is cloud, no surprise there, I would hope, I would expect. And we have some research among yourselves, among your community, about what various resellers and distributors are thinking about cloud and how it affects their business for the future. I'd like to share that data with you and make some conclusions out of that data, and also focus on the distributor themselves. So, the two main forces that I'd like to talk about. One is more technology, that's the cloud, I'll come to that in a moment. The other ones are much more softer, more of a social change. Forrester calls it empowered. We've written a book and released a book about empowered where we talk about employees of a company supporting customers by breaking rules, by using Facebook, although they're not allowed to use Facebook officially, by calling customers or tweeting customers directly, although that may not be official policy of the enterprise, but really doing good and supporting customers in situations. And we have, I don't know, dozens of case studies in the book called Empowered. Because what we're seeing is a whole way, a whole new way of behaving by employees in businesses, your customers, people who will be buying IT. They feel much more empowered, much more capable. Here are some factoids, some numbers around that, and we talk here about millennials, just to explain. The demographics uh, scientists among you may know this, but millennials are people who are born between 1980 and the year 2000. So becoming an important factor within the workforce of many companies. In fact, within 10 years, we'll start to see many of these millennials in middle management positions signing and being responsible for larger budgets, including IT projects. And of course, let's say a short distance after that, there'll be the highest executives in the even larger corporations. Now, millennials have different expectations. And let's think about our industry. It's really only the technology industry and probably the drugs industry, and not, not thinking of pharmaceuticals, but other types of drugs, that uses the term users. 
we still call many of our um, customers users because they're using systems. User misunderstanding used to be a very common term among support engineers, among support people. No longer will that be the case or should that be the case because they are very much consumers. They are consuming a service. We'll see enterprise IT budgets, by the way, move from what at the moment is around 17% of the budget is spent on a service to around 37% within the next three or four years, which will be spent on a service as opposed to product sales. Everything will become as a service. You've all heard about software as a service and so on. And business people and companies buying from yourselves will be consuming technology as opposed to buying units of technology. Most enterprises, no, many enterprises already have a bring your own PC program. They don't buy the PCs themselves anymore. They provide a budget or support employees who want to buy and select their own. Let's call it PC or their gadget or their device to use. And IT is expected to support whatever devices there are provided or bought by the consumers. So totally different art of buying, different expectations you'll be finding with your buyers in the future. So there's the one change, the empowered change, the more social change. And I've hinted already, I suppose, at this other change. And it's really very much wrapped up in that term, cloud computing. Many people have different meanings and, and understanding around cloud computing. It, it's really coming together now uh, towards a sort of standard thinking. But I think most people have a, it's a very similar implication of what cloud computing is. Where technology is something you're provided as a service, as utility pervasive around the whole company. So we put together this definition, which summarizes, I think, what I've just said, a standardized capability of IT. Now, there could be a processing power. It could be storage. It could be the ability to enter data or get a report or support a business process. Now, it's not just being provided and delivered as a service. But the business model behind cloud computing is also quite radical because at the end of the day, we'll start to see businesses, small and medium businesses, even large corporations, preferring to consume this service and pay as they go, as they pay for utilities, power supply, and so on. Which means that we'll start to see sales teams for many of the vendors, many of the resellers, restructuring themselves to have a different type of sales organization because as a service you are selling something and then having to go back maybe within one year, probably two or three years and renew the contract. So we must ensure that customer satisfaction has been achieved through that time so that you can make those renewals. The rate of renewal will be a very important uh, business imperative just like it is at Forrester where our business is annual contracts. And the way that salespeople will service their customers will become a very important part of the way that they do business. Now, not everything will go to the cloud. Let's take the sort of metaphor or a comparison of how do you get around, what transportation platforms do you select when you decide to go somewhere. So if I fly from Stuttgart to Nice, I select public transportation because uh, I don't have a, my own private aeroplane. It's definitely too far to drive. Uh, so I take, well, I suppose, an equivalent of a cloud service. I fly down with Lufthansa and then take the helicopter, of course, from Nice to Monte Carlo because that's the fun part of the trip. Uh, but of course, if I'm driving around to the golf course uh, from Stuttgart, wherever, I would use my own private car because it makes no sense in that case to book Lufthansa for that flight or even get a helicopter. It wouldn't be available. It wouldn't be financially attractive to me, and the chances are they wouldn't be actually flying that route at the same time that I want to go to the golf course. So there'll be some things that will go very easily and very fast to a cloud environment. And there'll be quite a few things, and of course the mix will be even heavier for the larger corporations that worry more about the data and competitive advantage and so on that will not go to a cloud. 
So don't be too alarmed by many of the uh, forecasts about cloud computing taking over the world. It's not entirely true. Many uh, products, uh, many applications, many systems will be still delivered and run on premise within our organizations and corporations. Now, we did a survey in the uh, third quarter of last year among channel resellers, among channel members. So I'll use the word reseller maybe cautiously because one of the questions that we asked of these uh, panel members were, are they a distributor or a reseller or a systems integrator? Curiously, out of the, how many were it, 160 odd, I think, not a single company or a single respondent was able to pick just one of those descriptors for their business model. Everybody was a mix. Even the distributors also did systems integration, were doing reselling and so on. So the input that we got from them, and remember this is Q3 of last year, so we've heard forecast numbers before and of course the market is picking up, coming out of a recession. No surprise that, yes, we anticipate growth. Maybe a little bit surprised that 37% um, are anticipating significant growth and 16% even are anticipating doubling their business. But when we ask them how do they see this growth and where do they see this growth, on the one side they are planning to expand their footprint, increase their share of wallet with their existing customer bases. But we also see significant selection of we will expand by having an offering and providing new technologies. And we will also expand by adding new services to our business model. Here's some uh, data where we broke it down by um, geography. So in the Europe, we're a little bit more bullish maybe about growth. Or maybe no, less bullish, I would say, because we have slightly, as opposed to significant, uh, although 14% compared to 9% are selecting doubling their business. But uh, at the bottom, on the right side, you can see that 10% uh, of the companies that we have had here in Europe in that survey told, told us that they would plan to sell their business, which was interesting. So the business mix is going to change, and the resellers know that and are planning for that. Less product, more services. Down 10 points in terms of product reselling, product business, and going up and balanced by adding new types of services, consulting and professional services, and managed services, as you can see here. Let's look at managed services for a moment. So, to some extent, they are already doing that. 52% of the, the survey population actually do already provide managed services. Probably infrastructure support, desktop support, and so on. And then we see another 18 plus 15, so 33% are planning to add those types of services to their offering portfolio. And these are the services that uh, they picked uh, and uh, indicated that they're interested in working in and providing. So remote support for various types of infrastructure components, right down to security, mobility you start to see there as well. There were, I think, about 12% of that community that said they would not add managed services to their portfolio, and we asked them why, what are their inhibitors? And this is maybe an interesting slide for all your distributors out there, as I'll point out maybe uh, in a few moments' time. Inhibitors would be investment required, either in hiring people with the right skills to provide those services, to support those systems, or in actually investing in physical things like a data center uh, and uh, call centers and so on and so on to do that. So some inhibition there among that 12%, actually a small portion of the general population that we, we surveyed. That do not want to go towards managed services fully. Over time, we've observed that the typical classical VAR is really disappearing from the landscape in terms of a value-added reseller. Their business models are changing. 
And we're seeing people move from the left to the right, as indicated here on this slide. And th these little circles you see there, they're called Harvey balls, and uh, a, an open circle would mean not very much at all, as opposed to a full circle would mean very much for each of these business lines. So we think that a lot of classical computer resellers are going to be adding lots of skills around business, business process consulting, helping their customers to automate business processes as opposed to implement information technology. So going up in terms of consulting around business process, but also consequently coming back or reducing the competencies they're offering around architecture, infrastructure, implementation work and so on. We actually see resellers hiring application developers like crazy. Another question in our survey, and almost everybody reported back to us that they are hiring more application developers. And five years ago, most resellers would have no developers at all. Interestingly, we start to see some very innovative resellers actually pick up the idea that they can be the vendor manager for their customers. Big enterprises can afford to have a vendor management office where they carry a scorecard about vendor performance, reliance, um, responsiveness, quality of the products, how the people work with you, the culture fit, and so on. And they maintain scorecards about vendors. They have short list of strategic vendors, uh, and so on and so on, to smooth the procurement process. That's Obviously, for many small businesses or medium-sized businesses, not necessarily something you're going to have your own resources to do. And interestingly, we'll start to see resellers getting into that business and providing that as a service to their customers. So we see some of those things listed here. Also, by the way, we see um, a trend that resellers are getting very much more into doing very active marketing of their solution, developing their own brands, promoting their own solutions. To some extent, we're seeing platforms laid out now between vendor, distributor, and resellers where marketing campaigns can be run with all parties being involved, with corporate identity being shared or passed through the supply chain, and resellers getting much more involved than they used to be. Although, of course, there's still a way to go for many of them because they don't necessarily have those resources at the moment or those skills. So it's very nice to go down to a Cisco event called Partner Velocity. It was in Barcelona last November, where Cisco held a two-day training for marketing managers of their partners. Worldwide events. There were marketing managers from Vladivostok, Johannesburg, uh, other areas in China, uh, or Asia, as well as the US, and of course in Europe. Uh, and a very interesting event just to see something like that going on. So, we think resellers themselves are changing their business model, are reacting to the cloud trend and changes going on around the market. In terms of, in terms of the business-to-business business market, we, we estimate around 1.2 channel partners are active around the world at the moment. Now, if you think through some of the things that I've talked about, and there's a few other factoids that came out in the reports that we've been publishing, uh, managed service providers will be able to service more customers than people selling product, where you have salespeople on the street completing transactions, sales transactions. And we're seeing that increase. We talked about the attractiveness of becoming a managed service provider uh, in small mode, you know, within local geographic regions or within one industry only. I mean, there aren't going to be more customers around not significantly, unless you think of geographic expansion and the emerging markets. Uh, so we think there is actually going to be a sort of washout of channel partners, around a 15% um, loss. I'm only thinking of a German word at the moment. I think it's 15% reduction in the, the volume or, or the community of channel partners in our industry over the next uh, three or four years. The ones that will survive or win will be those who will grow through acquisition or mergers. A lot of those activities going on at the moment. Uh, and more importantly, and this applies equally to vendors, by the way, because technology is becoming very much commoditized. 
customers are very glib about you know, features and functions, and if one company does happen to have a feature now, after all, the other company will provide it in six months' time, so catch-up is not that difficult. Differentiation isn't that critical anymore to buyers. Product differentiation. So we'll start to see that marketing will really play a very heavy role for vendors and for resellers in terms of providing success. So let's pay some attention now to distributors. Now I've started my research actually about well, a year and a half ago because my vendor clients were asking me to help them to understand what their resellers were worrying about and what were their thoughts about uh, cloud. That's why we did this, uh, this survey. And doing that research, I found out that there was another player that, to be honest, many vendors were not even considering in their thoughts and in their consideration, in their planning for, for cloud computing. And those are the distributor themselves. And I got talking to many of those. Uh, and uh, these are the things that I'm hearing. That they're very much changing their orientation. I mean, originally, they were there as uh, an outsourcer to the vendors, the manufacturers, I suppose you would call them providing these services. Obviously, stock, inventory, keeping things on the shelf. Financing, of course, is an important factor, not only helping resellers in terms of credit, but also for the manufacturers, it's important to be able to sell product to distributors and book those revenues and have that on their, uh, in their financial reports as opposed to going to a retailer. Channel management, sales marketing, all the other services you see there. I've heard from many distributors now that they are basically changing the orientation from, yes, okay, the manufacturers, the vendors are still there, but actually my customer are the resellers. And I will care about what the resellers need. And some of those slides, of course, I presented already. What are resellers thinking? What are their concerns? What are inhibitors that they're considering in terms of expanding their business? So we'll start to see these services it will be very interesting for you distributors to offer and to provide to computer resellers and IT resellers, including, as you see at the bottom, there's an opportunity to do hosting, to run a cloud, to run some sort of local cloud for the resellers. So the resellers told us that infrastructure costs and investments are too high. Well. This is how the distributor community could help them around those problems. Another issue that many resellers are coming up with, and I've talked about cloud computing and empowered, remember, means that buyers behave differently, the business model is different. Well, some of the resellers will have to adjust their organization and their business model to be able to do that. So, the opportunity is there for distributors and also for vendors to help them through that process. And I went to the Microsoft Partner Conference at, uh, in Washington last year, and uh, there were trainings around business model. What does cloud computing, computing mean to you? And so on and so on. So <laughs> things like that are being offered and put together from various parties. Even issues like staffing, finding qualified staff something that maybe the distributors could work on. Uh, some little bit wilder idea that we have there, but uh, there might be an interesting business model for somebody there. When I hear stories like a software company called Autonomy, which I think is uh, the largest software company now in the UK, um, are offering a free iPad to anybody who applies for a job there because they really are having trouble finding resources, even in a market like the UK. It's interesting to see that sometimes the problems we're having here in, in old Europe compared to the developing countries. So if I do a similar analysis for the business models of a distributor, I'm thinking more here of the business-to-business -business distributor in the business-to-business -business supply chain. You can see changes going on from the left to the right side. So, there will still be product that will be um, collected in inventory and provided, it'll be less. Because the retail and online channels will take over to some extent and cloud computing will reduce on an overall manner 
the amount, the volume of product that will be used and uh, procured. But we'll start to see distributors opening up marketing and sales services, as we've called it here, helping their resellers to do marketing campaigns from awareness right through to sales execution. And we'll start to see some distributors be very interested in either physically providing hosting or at least channeling hosting facilities, cloud facilities to their resellers. So we've highlighted that here on those Harvey balls as well. Here are some examples that we found over the last six months of distributors doing exactly this. Avnet, Ingram Micro, Arrow, and take data in a different way. So either physically building little data centers to help resellers to become themselves a cloud provider, or channeling cloud services that maybe will be run in the background by larger providers. Now, the whole idea of cloud data center is uh, very much a gold rush. The vendors are going for it, hardware and software. The distributors, some, are going for it. The telcos will be going for it, of course, and the telcos are relishing the idea of cloud computing because billing, charging on the, on the fly, charging per use, that's where they come from. They know how to do that. They have the intelligence and the software and the experience to do that. So it's a very interesting uh, configuration at the moment and a very interesting competitive scenario that's going on around that. Okay. In the report that I have written based on this presentation, it actually comes out today at Forrester, and uh, in a moment I'll show you my email address. If anybody would like that report, just send me an email and I'll be very happy to, to pass it through to you. We have three call to actions because we have three types of audiences through the clients of Forrester. One are distributors, dramatic change or die. Some distributors will decide to focus on physical distribution, the classical distribution business model. Well, they can do that if they focus very much on probably fewer vendors, maybe certain technologies only, and that added value will be important then, and the scale will be there. But other distributors will do things like we've shown before on these slides as examples, move into different types of services and try to satisfy reseller needs as they continue to be successful in front of their customers, SMBs, or even enterprises. That requires, though, changing um, and adding different skills to, to the portfolio that you have. If you're an vendor, you have to understand what's going on as well channel managers, putting the channel strategy into the corporate strategy is a very important factor. We see still the case that many vendors actually have their channel within the sales organization, so it's a sort of secondary channel to market. And over the last few years during the recession, those vendors were the most culpable in terms of channel conflict because the sales manager at the top worried about the number as opposed to worrying about keeping partnerships and maintaining business relationships with their channel partners. But vendors who are thinking forward now are actually escalating or elevating the channel strategy to something much more strategic than it has been uh, within their companies over the last years. And what they definitely have learned over the last 12 months or so is that distributors have a very important role to play and some distributors are actually advising resellers about the right products to collect, the right product portfolio to maintain, and the right vendors to work with for growth. So that's important to understand. And the resellers are becoming a little bit picky and choosy about the distributors they want to work with. And if they want to change their business model because of cloud computing, because of new expectations in their market, they'll be looking around and want to work with those distributors that will help them and support them in those changes. And in that, we're going to go to market plan. So here's my email address for those of you who are interested in that report, maybe even these slides if you want to. 
I'd like to thank you very much. I can't see any of you at the moment because the lights here are shining down on me, but uh, I hope it was of interest to you, and uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Cheers, thank you.